This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're a very fortunate night to have as our guest two of my favorite guys. We serve in the legislature together and have remained friends over the years. The administrator and co-administrator of the Alabama Beverage Control Board, Mr. Mac Gibson, who hails from Prattville originally, and Mr. William Thigpen, who has several hometowns, and born and raised in Greenville, and had businesses and successful businesses in Fayette County, and now he and Mac have been heading this Alabama Beverage Control Board for 11 years now. So good to have him on the show. Thank you for thank having us. Thank you for having us, Steve. But thank y'all. That's a very important agency for Alabama, I tell you that much. Uh, man, y'all are qualified to do it, both of you businessmen, uh, successful businessmen, and legislative buddies of mine. We've been friends a long time. Uh, Mac and I, wh wh what year did you come to the legislature from Prattville? Came in 95, before was my first session, elected in 94. Did you follow Groovy? Uh, no, I followed Powell. Powell, that's right, yeah. Uh, but now, let me say, we served on that one term together. We, we got to be good friends. And I've, I've known William Thigpen <laughs> since he played college <laughs> basketball at Troy University. It's appropriate we're here at Troy University Studios. He was a star guard. I used to go out there to Sartain Hall and watch William Thigpen play basketball. It uh, had with John Enson, Embriaco, Holly, Clayton Bryant, a bunch of them. William, well, tell us about that team. Uh, you, you came out of Greenville. I came out of Greenville, and you know, I'll tell you the honest God truth, I played one year of high, uh, nobody knows this, I played one year of football up at Moorhead State before coming to Troy. Is that right? What yeah. position did you play in football? I played football? quarterback, and then. Uh, you grew up in Greenville and played quarterback at Greenville High School. I did. And, uh, and then played basketball I, there, too, though. Played basketball there, too, and then I came back and went to Troy. Talk to Mr. Coach John Archer. Probably you won't remember him. Oh, you I do. Well. Him. A lot Good of people gentleman. do. And uh -huh. He gave me a scholarship, and uh, we I stayed over there from '60 to '64, and we averaged 22 wins per year for four years. And the first game I ever played in as a freshman, we lost. That's the reason I remember it. 117 to 119, no three-pointers. <laughs> Is that right? Who were y'all playing? We played Mississippi College. Uh, now, there was a conference everybody was in back then. Mississippi College was in that conference, wasn't yes, it? Yes, they were. It was, it was Livingston uh, was in it? Jacksonville? Jacksonville. Uh, you know, we used to be West Alabama, now it's uh -huh. uh, Livingston. Livingston University, uh -huh. uh, North Alabama, uh, those schools in that category. Uh -huh. We used to have some real big... Uh, Dog fights with the Huntington College. Oh yeah, Huntington played. That was good too. Yeah, Skelton played for them. Yep, that's right. You know, Skelton, my high school coach at Charles in his high school. Is that right? Yeah, he went on to coach at Charles in He's my high school basketball coach. How about that? Now, where'd you play in high school? I played Charles in I was oh. born and raised in Troy. I lived all my life in Troy. Yeah, and uh, I played center in basketball. Yeah, I was. I'm six. You five. was pretty at that time. You was pretty tall I was man tall. of that era. Yeah, six five. Yeah, and um. I played every sport like you did at Charles Henderson. William, uh, William tickles me. He says when he played basketball, he is when they played under the rim. <laughs> That's what I tell him about. They say, when did you play? I said, we played that and when we played under the rim. <laughs> well, it's appropriate to have you on the show because you've got such Troy connections. This is Troy University Television. We've had this show 15 years now. It's have a good viewing audience in the River Region and Wiregrass. Matt, you were, were you born and raised in Prattville? Uh, raised in Brown. Uh -huh. uh, Dad was a civil engineer with the old highway department. I was born in Camden, Alabama. So you were, your dad was with the highway department? Uh, yeah, he was with the mm -hmm. highway department. How did you time. get in the tire business? Tire business, Dad uh, uh, left the state and opened up a auto repair shop in Prattville uh -huh. and uh, had a 24-hour truck stop at auto uh, right repair there, right, right uh -huh. there where 82 and 31 uh -huh. connected, the old Florida short route, and I was raised in it, and so I just gravitated to it when I got out of service. As soon as you got out of service, mm -hmm. what, what service were you in, Navy? Army. Army. Uh, during, were you during the Korean War? Went in on the tail end of Korea. Of Korea. I never really got out of Alabama good. Went, mm -hmm. uh, went to uh, basic training in Camp Gordon, Georgia, and went to uh, air, airframe and engine mechanic school in uh, Texas, and then came back to Fort Benning, and went from Fort Benning to the Army Ballistic Missile Agency in Huntsville and was discharged in Huntsville after 44 months of service. 
Mac, what about, uh, let's see, now, as soon as you came back from the Army, then you went into a tire business with your daddy. It was, it was a tire and... No, um, no, I, I, uh, <coughs> I tried different things, and uh -huh. Dad, in the meantime, when I, when I came out, had, had sold out at that time so uh -huh. uh, no I didn't get to work with him but you so you started on that time business yourself. I started myself I uh -huh. did took over so what year did you start that business 81 uh-huh had it for uh, uh, we would celebrate our 40th year of course I had meantime sold it to my boys back uh, in 2004 uh -huh. and uh, we would have had 41 years and they uh, 40 years I'm sorry it was celebrated 40 years and they sold it uh, last weekend Still got a lot of advertising. Yeah, they gonna keep the same. They're name gonna keep the same mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mac, what about how many years you served in the legislature? Sixteen. I did too. I went uh, May two to ninety eight. terms. Uh huh. And then and you then became administrator right after. The, 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 you right after. Right after. Uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, what uh, year did you leave the legislature? Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Uh -huh. Well, actually, you, you leave it, I guess, in two thousand nine when the elections are. But uh huh. Through twenty ten. Yeah. yeah. And then, th th when did you become ABC director? 2011. And it was Governor Bentley. Governor Bentley. Y'all yeah, got to be good friends in the legislature. You and we all did. All three of y'all, William and Thigpen and Dr. Bentley. We all sat up there together. Uh -huh. We did. Y'all sat by each other. We did. Well, so Dr. We Bentley did. was from Tuscaloosa, so and I was from Fayette, and I had part of Tuscaloosa in my district. Okay, you had part of Tuscaloosa. I had part of Tuscaloosa in my district uh -huh. when I was up there. How many years you served in that? I served 12 years. went in in uh, uh, 1998 and left in 2010. When I first met you, you still had your car dealership up there. Yes, uh -huh. we did. Ford, uh, well, it was called Ford Mercury Dealership, uh -huh. Fayette Ford Mercury Dealership. Yeah. And I stayed in that, and as I, w I was in the sewing business for about 15 years, making men's sport coats. So right there in Fayette. Right in Fayette. Uh huh. Well, gentlemen, let's talk something about it. So both of y'all went over there together in 2011 as a tandem. We, yes, we did. As a tag team over there. And y'all, and Mayor Emory Farm was the was the head of it before y'all. I replaced uh, Emory Farm. Uh -huh. Now y'all, y'all fit at home over there, don't you? Oh yeah. Where's y'all's office? Tell everybody where your office is. It's on uh, Gunner Park Drive, 2715 uh -huh. Gunner Park Drive West. Uh, come out just like you go into Lagoon Park, and we are right midways yeah. of the park area. You know, been that, there a long time. Yeah, that area was taken over from the Air Force, I think, when they closed down Gunner. Right. Well, Mac, uh, you and William, and uh, William might elaborate on it. <coughs> Tell me the history of why Alabama's in the control business, Alabama Beverage Control Board, uh, and do you, if you even know the percentage of states that have regulation, did it start during prohibition, and do you know the history of how there, it started and why we why we're that way? There are 17 uh, states that have some form of control, whether it may be wholesale only, may be wholesale retail. Yeah. And it may be a combination of of all, but we're one of 17. The history of it in Alabama was that uh, prohibition was lifted. Now, what year was this about? Uh, uh, prohibition was lifted in, was enacted 21, uh, lifted, uh, lifted in 33, Three, I believe. 33. So, okay. 33 so correct. in 33, we started the Alabama Beverage Control Board. No, mm -hmm. no. Uh -huh. was in th the, the bootleggers were in charge from 33 to 37. <laughs> Is when the legislature enacted the Alabama ABC. So they it was wild, wild, wild west open, territory. Wide open. There was no laws regulating alcohol. Not in Alabama because the 21st Amendment turned it over to the states, gave the regulatory authority to the states, as it still is. But Alabama had no regulatory authority when the For amendment four was years adopted. we wouldn't want no man. Let, yeah. why, the, the, the bootleg was a political, I guess it was political. They didn't want any control. Well, you know, I've always heard all my life that because uh, I was raised in a dry county, Otago, right next to Montgomery, and I said, well, it's the, everybody told me the reason we're dry is because the preachers and the bootleggers keep it that way. You know? I've always heard that. Uh, you can tell that's been a story politically for uh, years. For well, a long uh, time. For a long time. But, uh, it, and then, uh, uh, of course, the legislature, by the way, the governor had to over, uh, the legislature tried to over, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the governor vetoed it and the legislature overrode the ve governor's veto to even establish the ABC board. Uh-huh. Is that and right? Yeah. It was, uh, they were having a time with alcohol back then. It's much similar to what we're having now in uh, marijuana, I guess. Very similar to uh -huh. it. Uh, but uh, state control, because of the taxes that were added in the ensuing years. Now, bear in mind, we're going back to 1937. 
And now Alabama has 56% tax on alcohol, spirits, I'm speaking yeah. of. And people say, that's the reason that people can't understand why Alabama is higher than Florida, Georgia, Mississippi. We're the fourth highest in the nation because of our taxation. But it also brings in around $200 million a year from the general fund. So kind of hard to let go of that. So $200 million comes from the AB, Alabama Beverage Control well, A Board. total of $303 million, but just to the general fund, the general fund agencies is a little over 200 now what about what's the other? We want the other three hundred. How you get three hundred? Where's the other hundred million? Uh, what's yeah, that now? Uh, the other, the other hundred million is, is are beer taxes and other uh, taxes we collect for uh, local entities on their beer and wine sales as uh -huh. well. So, but a total of what we collect uh -huh. uh, amounts to that. And yeah. that uh, that figure he's kidding you doesn't cost the state a, a zero cents. No. We pay everything. We pay all of oh, our. Oh, that's after y'all's expenses. Yeah, oh yeah. We, we pay yeah. all of oh our, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, we pay all of our benefits. We pay all of our salaries. We pay all of our expenses. That's after we after we pay all that, and the state doesn't pay anything for that uh, money that they get received from us every year. Well, how does the other 33 states operate? They, like they operate on what we call an open a license. They charge a volume tax, so many cents per gallon. And to every to the distilleries. Yeah, well, uh, ours is a markup tax. Uh -huh. In other words, we take the price of the liquor, add our freight, and add our uh, markup, which is what we operate the ABC on, plus another ten percent that goes to general fund, and then the other taxes. So it's really forty-six percent of ta uh, taxes because ten percent our markup uh, that goes. But it still goes in the general fund. All you, all the revenue, this all the profits the made. Even if we make profits, that profit goes to the cities and counties. Yeah, we don't even have a capital improvement fund. In other words, they they suck it dry every year. ABC board. Well, let me ask you this: What, what would what are the advantages of having a, a control board over an open state? What, why why do you think it's better? Uh, to it's have it? just that it uh, we're ranked in the bottom five in alcohol. Per com uh, consumption per capita. So really, the, you control it, is what you what we you control do. it, and we're Still not, not in the top five in income from alcohol, okay. and on the bottom, and in, uh, in the amount consumed. So that's the way you maintain control. Bear in mind, all this was enacted during uh, Alabama was pretty pretty strong evangelical state, right? And uh, they wanted to keep it, and it stayed pretty much that way, uh -huh. and. Uh, so we have, but we have to run a business and balance regulation with, with income to do what's best for the state. And so really and truly, the only people that pay for ABC, he said, as he said, we don't cost the average taxpayer anything. We contribute, but the people that are paying for it are the consumers, right. the alcohol, the people who consume alcohol. Not grandma if she don't buy a bottle, she's not contributing at all. Right. Or anybody that does not drink, does not contribute to ABC. Mm -hmm. We're totally supported by users. So that's an interesting point. You're saying because we have the Alabama Alcoholic Control Board that you and William administer, we have the, we're one of the lowest five states in consumption per capita. Per consumption. capita. And also, we want to make more profit than other. Well, these states that are non-control, they don't make the profit. They get no. the no. And uh -huh. alcohol has a social cost because it is a mind-altering drug. Right. That's the reason you want to control it. Uh huh. Is because it does have an effect on the mind. It has effect on uh, really on youth, uh, on younger people who drink or affecting their brain. They don't realize it, but it has some long-term effects on their brain. So. We try to tamp down on underage drinking and, of course, overserved binge drinking. We, we work heavily on that with the bars and all to make sure they don't overserve the customers. So y'all control that. We, we, uh, like we, if somebody applies for a liquor license, does it go through y'all? Yes, sir. Y'all, how do y'all decide who to get? Who gets it? The local people decide that, or y'all no, decide? No, well, well, first of all, we do have to have municipal in a city. We do have to have city approval. Uh -huh. But we do in-depth background checks. We are very thorough in checking everyone out. Yeah, like sure people who detect is like they yeah. study that. Right. Uh -huh. If you've had a, a, a you know a felony on your background, you can't.
can't get a license Any kind of right now. No. You can't uh -huh. get a beverage license right That's, now. Is that by statute? No, we do. By statute. Uh -huh. Our inspectors go out and inspect the site, first of all, after the city okays it, like Mr. Max said, and they take pictures and then we do the background checks. We got a, a division out there that take, takes, takes care of all of the uh, licensees and inspection. We go around and make inspect, inspections of all the licensees, which there's a total of about 15,000 license issued in the state of Alabama for you got lounges, bars, restaurants, package stores, all different kind of people that are in the retail business of selling alcoholic beverages. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty complication and we have a also once a month we have a commission here where if you had a violation you have to come before the before the commission. Now who, did you, you, you two oversee no, it's, it's a three man it? three man uh, mission and I'm a chairman of that commission. Who else is on that now? Well usually we d divide it up there we take a, a division leader uh -huh. uh, usually out of inspections and, and a, a division leader out of personnel most of the time and then we have uh, Joe uh, Adams who was one of our Good Ozark, uh, yeah. Gloria. He's one of our attorneys that helps us some, and he, he's, he's on that. And we've been having those meetings virtual this year because of the pandemic, and it's worked out real well for uh -huh. us as far as people having to travel and come. Yeah. And we have, we have minor, we have minor operatives that, uh, that go in and try to, you know, we have, we have to get the parents of permission, but they'll go in and they'll give them Aaliyah, had, they have to have a certified law enforcement officer with them, and they go in and try to buy, un, uh, you know, a, a sick pack of beer or something, and and then when they do it, uh, they have they charge a clerk, and then the, the landlord that owns it has has to come with the violation. He can either pay the fine then or, or come to a hearing with us, bring his lawyer, and then in a, in a period of a certain number of months, if he has so many violations, then you can you can. Uh, Suspend his license. How do they? How does somebody just report somebody breaking the law, or y'all's investigators find out about it? Honestly, selling no. to people under eight, eighteen is a drinking age. Most of the time, it's a parent. It's twenty-one. The drinking age is eighteen. Twenty-one. So people, that, 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 there's probably a lot of students breaking the law out there. Oh yeah, you absolutely, think? there are. And uh, so you got you got bars that break. That's what y'all get most of is, yeah. is Part, bars. Parents, no, really and truly, probably package stores. The I mean, they're I selling to people I'm under sorry, a, not package stores, convenience stores, uh -huh. because beer is the most abused. But y'all obviously uh, beer and whiskey. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we don't sell any beer in our stores. We only sell right. spirits know, yeah, or whiskey. Y'all oversee that, though. Yes, we oversee uh -huh. that. Uh, but uh, most of the time, it's a complaint. It's a complaint from a parent. Could okay, be a just yeah, just somebody a writes a complaint to say, yeah. "Mac, I'm uh, worried about my daughter well, buying this whiskey." That, that they'll tell on each other. But oh, the they, young people telling each other. No, 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 no. The uh, competitors will. Oh, I see. Okay. And then, but if you get a parent that uh, uh, knows that his child is getting alcohol illegally, let us know. If you think about it, there's not an underage person in Alabama that really gets the alcohol. It's an adult that gets it for them. And well, either, 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 either the adult the adult doesn't check their identification. Oh, okay. Adult is behind any illegal sale of alcohol in Alabama in some way or not. Mm -hmm. Now, now well, let me ask you: We y'all, if some of y'all get a complaint and y'all have a hearing, it's William and it's one of the field men and Joe Adams, uh, the three people. Joe Adams and Jeff Rogers, who used to be chief of our enforcement division, uh -huh. comes in. He's a retired state worker that comes to work three days a week and helps us with our inspections and reports and he serves as a member of that. Well I bet y'all have a lot of hearings don't you? We, we do have them every month. Do you month. make them come to y'all's building out there? Well we're doing it virtually. We've oh, been doing it virtually. We've been doing it virtually. But before but that how did y'all do it? They came to the building. Uh -huh. We have but all over the state they had to come our, into y'all. Our boardroom is set up just like a courtroom. I so see okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, we Joe's have a, been we have doing that ABC thing. Now you can if you come to that commission board and we have a ruling against you. You can't appeal it to our three-man board. And then if you get the wrong, you don't like the decision they made, you can appeal it to the circuit court. Uh -huh. So it's, it's run almost like a courtroom. Huh. Now, Joe Adams, has been, he's been a lawyer for ABC since the Wallace administration. Uh, no, yeah. Long, long yeah, time. He, yeah. If you ought to have somebody on interested about history of the ABC board, Joe would be the Well, he's been that, doing it a long time. He, yeah, he, uh -huh. he, he, he doing probably knows time. as much about the law and the past history of the ABC as anybody I've been around. Well, he's been doing it since the Wallace era. 
Uh, yeah, a long time. A long time. But now we are governed by a three-day. We really serve at the pleasure of a three-member board. Not uh, the governor? Uh, not the, it's kind of, I don't know how it happened. The governor appoints the three board members who appoints the administrator, uh -huh. but yet the administrator is on the governor's cabinet. And usually the governor has the biggest say-so <laughs> who gets appointed. So you, is she one of the three? Uh, the governor's one of the three on that commission? No. no. But she no. appoints, the governor appoints the three. Right. And then they appoint you. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, well, that's that, interesting. That's the way by code, code it's supposed to be done. done. You'll be interested in one of your old former uh, uh, conspirators when you win the, uh, conspirators when you win the uh, legislature, John Knight. Oh, yeah. John's on the board now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah we good. have uh, approximately about 175 stores across Is that what I was going to ask next? How many stores are there? We approximately have 175, and we've got six more uh, warehouse stores across the state besides the one we have out here at uh, Gunner Park Drive. Uh -huh. Every bottle of alcoholic beverage that comes into the state comes into this warehouse out here, and it's distributed by us. We, we probably ship 12 trucks a day. We we'll probably get 12 trucks in, but we'll average shipping somewhere between 14,500 and 15,000 cases per day to our mm -hmm. stores. And some, and some, if you if you are packaged, we got some people that own several stores together, and if they order enough cases, we'll deliver directly to them. Mm -hmm. But in our stores, there's uh, probably 680 employees. 60-something percent of those are me, uh, ladies, and 30 percent of those are single moms. Uh-huh. Well, that's a, a good That's an interesting business. Alabama, another thing, Alabama is unique. We're unique in having both private package stores. You know, you see this, you hear this come up about privatization. Yeah. We're already private. We've got four, at least probably 30 to 40 percent of our business is private. 40% of them, you and, and and then, not ABC stores, but private private business. Yeah, and then you got your ABC stores with the rest of it. So we're that's a, we're we're a hybrid state, the only one I know of in the nation. That's how do y'all grant the license for somebody to have a, a private <coughs> store? Would they have to pay a fee, or how do no, y'all do? Yeah, that? they do have to pay a fee, but there's no limit. Like Florida has a limit. You know, you've got uh, a, a, a spirits license in Florida may fetch a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars depending on where it is because they can sell right. sell it outside the state. But we issue we issue to those that qualify and just they pay the annual fee. Well you bring up an interesting point to my in state and out of state. Uh I've had people ask me over the years, uh that who decides what brands are in the A B C stores and in the private stores and can you order alcohol? Someone who lives in Huntsville can they order it from Chattanooga or Nashville? No. How no, does that it's work? It's not legal to ship in Alabama. Okay, it's not legal to ship in no, Alabama. Now no, we're working. There is a bill going through the legislature will make it legal for wineries to ship in Alabama. Are right y'all for that or against it? No matter. Uh, we, we, as long as we can regulate it, we're getting a pretty stiffly worded bill so that we can regulate it. We, in other words, we've got to have account somebody be accountable from the shippers, uh -huh. uh, not only the shippers, but the cut carriers. The carriers would have to let us know. Uh -huh. Give you an, uh, an example of what was it? Michigan had uh, over a million bottles shipped illegally into the state of Michigan when they went back and checked with the contract carriers, uh, the trucking companies yeah. that were shipped in the untaxed paid did not have a license, so we're trying to write ours so that we can keep a control of it. Let me ask y'all this question. We've only got about three minutes left. I, this bill that passed and Governor Ivey signed about Deliberate. delivering, I've had never had people so happy about something. They think that's the best thing since sliced bread, well, getting you, the people to deliver whiskey to the house. If you had been uh, uh, talking to us in the first part of the pandemic, when everything was shut down, except liquor stores, she didn't close us down, or package stores. Uh, you, everybody was hollering, wanting to be able to deliver alcohol. Restaurants with their food, which we did lighten up because we had the power under the code to allow curbside, but we had no p authority under the code to allow delivery. I honestly don't think it's gonna be as big as people, these delivery companies like, um, um, Ship Instacart, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. they charge a pretty penny, uh -huh. uh, and, and especially in alcohol. Drizzly is another big one; it's alcohol only, and they go find the cost is probably going to be prohibitive. I don't think it's going to be as big a thing as you would think it would be. Uh -huh. 
but we've got that well regulated too. If you read the bill, you'll see that uh, there are all kind of requirements for the drivers. Uh, they have to have be tested. They cannot have a, a DUI in the last six years. Something like that. Something like that. So, so, so what you're saying is they got to get the signature of the house. They have to have a signature of somebody that ordered that's 21 years old or older. older. If there ain't um, nobody there 21 years old, they bring it back. So it's not going to be profitable for people to deliver it to the companies. They got to get somebody who is certified to deliver it. That is correct. And that's much harder uh, to find somebody to deliver it. They can deliver it themselves, uh -huh. which they have to. They have still have to buy a delivery license, and they are required to carry two million dollars worth of liability insurance, or they can get a third party like Instacart, and they have to have uh, five million dollars worth of insurance. So it's very rigidly written. Uh -huh. The, so the Uber just bought out Drizzly. Okay. Drizzly. Drizzly was one of the largest deliverers of alcohol products in the in the country. So a lot of states had Drizzly, alcohol. Delivery. Uber yeah. Uber bought yeah. out Drizzly, and they're now into the. They were already doing it, but they now into the delivery of alcohol. Very 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 large, very big operation. Hmm. So it's but it's pretty stringent. It it's says going to be able to do it. Yeah, and they can't deliver on campus. Uh, they can't deliver anywhere. Their their youth normally uh -huh. congregated like that, yeah. so it's it's very rigidly written. Well, I'm try, they're there. again trying to protect mm -hmm. the young person. That's right. Well, gentlemen, our time's up. I hate. I love seeing y'all. We all went about a couple it of years goes ago. Goes faster, yeah. It goes by in a hurry. Folks, our guest tonight has been uh, the two administrators of the Alabama Beverage Control Board, of the state of Alabama, Mr. Mac Gibson. Uh, and Mr. William Thigpen, two fine gentlemen uh, running a major department in the state of Alabama. We, we thank them very much for the service they give the state of Alabama, and we thank you viewers for watching. Hope you tune in next week for Alabama Politics. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, William. Thank you, Steve.